Before Islam, the Arabian Peninsula was a place where the strong would take the rights of the weak without consequences. This changed during the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who put an end to oppression and gave people their rights. Islamic justice continued during the reign of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, who addressed the people after coming to power and stated, The weak among you is strong to me until I restore his right to him. The strong among you is weak to me until I take the right of the weak from him. During the reign of Umar ibn al-Khattab, he established a police force and a department for complaints, where common people could come and submit their complaints against governors. Umar ibn al-Khattab also appointed judges in different provinces and sent a letter to his judges which stated, Treat people equally in your council so that the noble does not covet your justice and the weak does not despair of your justice. Reconciliation is permissible between Muslims except for a reconciliation that makes permissible what is forbidden or forbids what is permissible. Justice continued during the reign of Uthman ibn Affan, who replaced many of his governors with more competent governors. Islamic justice continued during the reign of Ali ibn Abi Talib. However, after his assassination, the Rashidun Caliphate collapsed and the Umayyad dynasty took control of the Muslim world. The Umayyads abolished the Islamic policy of electing caliphs and began a policy of hereditary succession, granting special benefits to their tribe. The Umayyads went against the advice of the second Rashidun Caliph Umar ibn al-Khattab, who stated, Whoever pledges allegiance to a man without consulting the Muslims, neither he nor the one who pledged allegiance to him shall be followed. Therefore, the Umayyads faced strong opposition from scholars such as Imam al Hussein and Abdullah ibn al Zubayr, who both refused to pledge allegiance to the Umayyad Caliph Yazid. However, these rebellions were brutally crushed by the Umayyads, who eventually established full control over the Muslim world. Although the Umayyad Caliphs were corrupt, a level of justice was maintained by some judges and governors within the Umayyad Empire. For example, Ziyad bin Ubayhi, who was the Umayyad governor of Basra, was known for his justice. He increased the number of police officers in the city from 4,000 to 18,000, which allowed safety and security to return to the city. Many other reformers emerged during the Umayyad period, such as Aban ibn Uthman, who was the governor of Medina. Upon becoming governor, Aban bin Uthman replaced all corrupt judges in the city. Another righteous Umayyad governor was Al Muhallab ibn Abi Sufra, who was the governor of Khurasan in Persia. He was known for his justice and his charitable works, and he once stated, I am amazed at someone who buys slaves with his money, but does not buy free people with his favors. Other reformist Umayyad governors included the governor of Kufa known as Sayyid ibn al-As, who was dismissed by the Umayyads due to exceeding the budget in order to feed the poor during the famine, and the governor of Alexandria known as Abdul Aziz ibn Marwan, who organized the distribution of thousands of bowls of food to the poor people of the city every day. Justice returned to the Umayyad Caliphate when Umar ibn Abdul Aziz became the new Umayyad Caliph. Upon coming to power, Umar abolished financial privileges that were previously given to government officials from the ruling Umayyad tribe. He also returned all private land that was confiscated by previous Umayyad rulers. 
Umar ibn Abdul Aziz replaced corrupt governors and appointed new competent governors. He also increased the salaries of all governors and banned them from participating in private business and trade in order to reduce corruption and force them to fully focus on their duties as governors. On one occasion, his governor of Persia wrote him a letter which stated, The people of Khorasan are a people who have become bad, and nothing can reform them except the sword and the whip. So if you give me permission, I will do just that. In response to this letter, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz sent a letter to his governor which stated, I have received your letter stating that the people of Khorasan have become bad and nothing can reform them except the sword and the whip. You have lied. Rather, justice and truth will reform them, so spread that among them. After the death of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, injustice and corruption returned to the Umayyad Empire. Many Umayyad judges tried to reform the judicial system, but they failed, such as Tariq bin Amr al-Umawi, who spoke out against the Umayyad policy of crucifying political opponents. However, all of these calls for justice and reform fell on deaf ears, and the Umayyad Caliphate eventually collapsed due to tyranny and corruption. The Umayyads were replaced by the Abbasids, who were just as corrupt as the Umayyads. Despite this, justice was maintained during this period when jurists such as Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal wrote books on Islamic law, which were later used by judges across the Caliphate. However, these scholars refused to accept positions as judges, as the Abbasid Caliphs would often pressure judges to issue rulings that favoured them. Despite judges being used as political tools, there were many judges during the Abbasid period who were firm in justice and resisted pressure from the Caliphs and Princes. For example, the judge known as Abu Yusuf Ya'qub issued many rulings against the Abbasid Caliphs and once returned a poor man's orchard which had been seized by the Caliph. For example, the jurist known as Imam al-Awzai rejected the decision of the Abbasid governor of Syria to expel all Christians from Lebanon, after some of them revolted against the Abbasid government. Imam al-Awzai wrote a letter to the Caliph stating that all Christians should not be punished for the crimes of a few. As a result, the decision to expel the Christians was reversed. However, justice in the Muslim world began to decline during the Mamluk period, which consisted of widespread corruption. This corruption led to many judges such as Ibn Khaldun and Zakaria Ansari being removed from their positions as judges after they criticized corruption. During the Ottoman period, many un-Islamic practices began to creep into the legal system, such as the Yusk legal fees, which were taken from pre-Islamic Turkic laws. However, these practices were condemned by Ottoman judges such as Ahmad bin Yusuf al-Hanafi. Many other Ottoman judges continued to ensure justice across the empire, such as Zanbili Ali Effendi who objected to a decision by the Sultan to force all Christians in newly conquered territories to convert to Islam. Zanbili Effendi strongly opposed this decision and did not allow it to be applied. The Ottoman historian known as Shaki Barsalan emphasized the importance of judges in preserving justice during the Ottoman period. He stated, it has been proven that Islamic law, with its justice and honesty, is what preserved Christians in the Ottoman Empire during the days when the Sultan was able to implement whatever he wanted with them.